In Hawaii, you get crucified for failure. There has uh, developed an addiction to, to mediocrity. We're not the number one. We should be the number one. People cannot work for nothing. We have had a freeze on jobs, and we can't hire any new people. You don't have to be rich to be committed. From the taxpayer standpoint, I think it's a tremendous value. So what we've been forced to do is literally have cake sales. You know, they basically tell us if we had the workers, they'd be here tomorrow. There's been no promise that there will be any more money. I mean, we will be a third world country with first world amenities. I think these are the worst of times. Do you want your sons and daughters to be ordering a head table at a fancy restaurant, or do you want your sons and daughters to be waiting on those tables? Budget cuts, brain drain, and a lingering plantation mentality. Can the University of Hawaii survive these challenges? Or is UH fighting a losing battle? Your donation helps people live without limits. Thanks for giving. Among the most important people of ancient Hawaii were the kumuwa'o, those who kept the knowledge of culture and history alive in their minds to pass on to future generations. Today, the challenge has never been greater. Or the spirit of Hawaii's kumuwa'o stronger Hawaii's teachers, more important than ever. HSTA, changing minds. The University of Hawaii is at a crossroads. Some say the school can no longer be all things to all people, that it needs to focus on what is economically viable. Others say the undergraduate programs take a backseat to high visibility research. Well, as a land-grant university, UH can't alter its mandated mission. It must teach, it must conduct research, and it must extend its research-based knowledge to the community. But can UH afford to do all three equally well? Or do tough times demand tough decisions about priorities? If so, who should make them? Aloha, I'm Stephanie Sanchez. The problems the UH faces are complex and varied. There are a lot of opinions about what's wrong and how to fix it. That's what this program is about. If you think it doesn't matter to you, the next half hour is a wake-up call. Because the future of UH reflects the future of Hawaii. And many people believe that future is at stake. The message has been clear that the governor and the state do not think very highly of the university or think it's very important. On the contrary, the university is very, very important. Um, and it is the only game in town for most students living here. I do know that majority of our staff felt part of the problems is that the state of Hawaii doesn't make education a priority. Um, so evident by the fact that we get so many budget cuts and there, there seems to be that not, not that kind of support you see in other states for the educational system. The university doesn't have much control over its own budget, and this is, this is one of the real planning, one of the real reasons why it's very difficult to plan here. I mean, we didn't know, the university didn't know what its budget was going to be until just about a month ago. That's for the current fiscal year. And you, you can't plan in that kind of a, an environment when you don't know what, what your, your funds are going to be. Talented young people are not going to migrate or dra be drawn to an institution that they don't feel has got a healthy long-term future. There's been no promise that there will be any more money. We've got a promise that you'll be continually operating on inadequate budgets for the, you know, the next four or five years at, at least. We're losing our best faculty because, of course, the best faculty have lots of options in terms of other places to go. So the, the cream of the crop is always lost first. I would hate to see more of our talented, tenured faculty leave for better and higher paying jobs at institutions around the country. They are definitely thinking of jumping. If they can jump out, jump ship, they will. And, and a lot of them already have. Uh, because they don't see any future here. 
we're losing them to the Harvards and the Stanfords and the Michigans. Uh, we're not losing them to the second-rate institutions. I mean, we've, we've opened more new buildings at the university, I think, than in any other previous five or ten year period. And yet we haven't been e willing to give them additional money for electricity or utilities or anything like that. You can only cut for so long. You know, we've gone through a number of years of, you know, belt tightening and budget cutting. And, you know, going further, further, further down that path doesn't necessarily get you to a uh, final resolution of the problem. It's been a struggle because the university has been forced to reallocate from frontline programs just to meet infrastructure needs. Almost no one on the Board of Regents has any connection with higher education. Their political appointments. More and more leadership positions are being assumed by people um, who come from elsewhere and who are trained elsewhere. And I would say, uh, I would put it to you that it's, you know, one possibility, one possible explanation of that is that we can't produce such people locally. Now, no university amounts to anything unless it's accredited. It's a real threat to take away our accreditation. I'm frustrated. I, I meet with um, companies interested in coming to Hawaii all the time. And they basically say, well, if you had 500 engineering graduates, we'd be here tomorrow. The review board that it came to accredit the university pointed out the faculty is excellent. Uh, and, and the fault that they found was with the administration. And the fact that the administration was not communicating among itself, and it certainly wasn't communicating with its faculty. There doesn't seem to be any focused leadership at the university to take us through these extremely difficult financial times. So we're adrift, and I've never felt so much of this before in the past. There is a possibility that if we do not make significant changes now, that we will be left behind. And of course, it means that the whole state economy doesn't really move. You know, and if, you can't, if you're not getting the work, an educated workforce, you can't move the state economy. We can end up being a, um, a vacation destination for the rich, which means that the only kinds of jobs we'll have are service jobs, and, and that we will not have any kind of level of jobs that are desirable for people who are highly educated. We've had serious problems in the past. I remember in the late 70s and early 80s, we had some tough economic times. But we seem to be more of a community. I don't get that sense today that we are that kind of a community. I'm not sure why, but I do think these are not the best of times. These are the worst of times. We will be forgotten, and we will, I mean, we will be a third world country with first world amenities. Two important voices are missing from this program. Despite assurances of a fair forum for their points of view, Governor Cayetano and UH Board of Regents Chair Donald Kim both declined repeated invitations to appear. We regret the absence of the Regent Chair and the Governor because communication is surely the first step toward solving our problems. Up next, what's working? The Honolulu Symphony is now celebrating its 100th anniversary in Hawaii. Founded on the slopes of Punchbowl a century ago, the Honolulu Symphony presents the music for the people of Hawaii. The Hale Kulani Classical Masterworks, the Honolulu Pops, and the Starbucks Starlight Concerts under the stars at the Waikiki Shell. Join in the excitement as the Honolulu Symphony celebrates 100 years of music in Hawaii. As far as why I became an educator, I, I think from the very beginning in my education on Kauai, from my elementary school days and through, through high school, I was very fortunate to have some very good, dedicated, caring people as my teachers. And uh, I don't think I ever really considered doing anything else. I uh, admired them and wanted to, to be like them. And I think ever since the fifth or sixth grade, I, I was pretty sure I was going to be a teacher. There are more than 3,100 men and women on the faculty of the 10 UH campuses that comprise the University of Hawaii. Most of them routinely put in a 50 to 60 hour work week. They teach, serve on committees, sit on boards, and do volunteer community service. And quite a few of them are involved in important research that makes major contributions to Hawaii's environmental and economic well-being. You're about to meet four of them.
uh, some of the varieties that we have introduced. Hector Valenzuela is an associate extension specialist with the UH. His work in organic farming technology is benefiting Hawai'i's farmers and Hawai'i's environments. My responsibility is to develop educational programs for the state of Hawaii. So what we're trying to do is to bring, introduce new technologies to the state that will be useful for the growers so that they will be able to increase their yields and also to be more efficient at what they do. Uh, so we try to develop new uh, fertilizer technologies, introduce new varieties to the state, and uh, similar types of technologies. What we're looking at here... Ken Grace is a professor in the Department of Entomology at the UH Maanoa campus. His research in environmentally friendly termite control has already had a huge impact on Hawaii's economy. Well, termites cost uh, homeowners in Hawaii oh, about... Uh, uh, in the order of 100 to 150 million dollars a year. So there's a pretty substantial impact. In fact, the termites you're looking at here, the Formosan subterranean termite, is really the most economically important pest in the state. Uh, what we're doing is hopefully alleviating that to some extent, and uh, it already has. In this particular project... Robert Paul works in the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, Department of Plant and Soil Science during research that could revitalize Hawaii's pineapple industry. People often say that the pineapple industry is dead. In a sense, it's changed. It isn't dead. We've moved away from canning. We've moved into fresh fruit. And that is where much more money is made on one fruit than when you can it or put it in some other juice formulation. Alexander Malahoff has been described as an industry unto himself, generating millions each year in grants. Professor of Oceanography, Chair of the Department of Ocean and Resource Engineering, Director of the Hawaii Undersea Research Lab, and Director of the Marine Bioproducts Engineering Center, Malahoff is credited with discovering Lo'ihi, the newest Hawaiian island. We're looking at microorganisms, and then take these microorganisms and you know, look at their, uh, uh, you know, look at their chemistry, and essentially grow them and dry them out and sell them. So it's Microagriculture, very high technology microagriculture, that's what it is. You might be familiar with the basaltic termite barrier, the uh, uh, crushed gravel barrier to termites uh, that was developed and patented at the university by my colleague, now retired, Emeritus Professor Minoru Tamashiro. My particular interest is actually in fruit quality and in what parameters before harvest influence fruit quality and how you can move that to market out of uh, the growth of these organisms will extract pharmaceuticals for, uh, uh, for arthritis, for in any, uh, in any problems with uh, the human body. In other words, you produce uh, uh, medicines. Other people in the project are very much involved in trying to minimize pesticide usage and at the same time um, provide continued employment for people within the state. Beyond that, we're looking at uh, opportunities to provide high-paying, high-technology jobs for our kids. The, f the few studies that have been done, the economic studies, have shown that investment in agricultural research brings a high return on investment, a 20 to 30 percent. So we know that what we're doing is impacting society. Many of the wood treatments that we are evaluating out here are now commercially available and in use in Hawaii because we demonstrated that they worked. So far, uh, in my tenure at UH, I've been here for about 10 years, I brought over a million dollars in, in grants and, and, and funding uh, to conduct a, a lot of our work. Uh, we, have, we have done uh, a lot of work with variety trials, uh, looking for alternative pest management practices, and uh, as we have here, uh, developing techniques to grow crops uh, in alternative ways. There is a very intimate connection between the tourist industry and the environment that we provide for tourists and agriculture. You can either have fields like this of pineapple, fields of tropical fruit, landscaped areas, or you can have halicoa. Take your pick. Preparing a new generation of scientists uh, is for me a very satisfying task, a lot more satisfying than any paper I might write and publish, and a lot longer lasting in terms of impact. Uh, and I certainly hope that we can continue to do it for quite a few years. Uh, we are the best. You know, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to track the funding. I mean, that's a, that's a very competitive business. 
The, the sad part is uh, if we lose any of the faculty that are bringing in the money, then of course uh, the university will uh, suffer and it will no longer be one of the best. This man provides graduate training for local doctors, nurses, and public health workers. He's recognized internationally as a leader in his field, a consultant for the National Institutes of Health on HIV vaccine development. Over a year ago, his long-distance phone lines were shut off because of budget cuts, so Professor Morins conducts his important research work from a payphone, and sometimes he has to wait in line. It's time to stand up and fight for our university. That message was filmed in 1996. David Morins left UH in 1998 to conduct his research at the National Institutes of Health. We went to Washington, D.C. recently to talk with Dr. Morins about the role research plays at a university. Not, uh, instruction in college is not somebody getting up in front of a classroom and giving a lecture and homework assignments and books. It's much more about intellectual stimulation. And the way it's supposed to work at a university is that the primary role of the professor is to do research before teaching. The primary role is to do research. Research is defined as the creation of new knowledge. If you're not creating new knowledge, you're peddling old knowledge. You don't need a college for that. You can do that in high school or even in a junior college. So there needs to be, professor, there needs to be a professoriate that can create new knowledge. The way it works is the professor creates new knowledge that's called research. The professor disseminates that new knowledge, that's called teaching, and the professor applies that new knowledge, that's called service. In this next segment, we'll hear from Randy Havre, CEO of Hawaii Venture Group, and Bill Richardson, a general partner in HMS Hawaii Management Partners. These two venture capitalists are turning UH research into economic gold for Hawaii. And we're in the venture capital business. And what that means is that we look for ideas, we look for uh, concepts, projects that are in their early stages, and we help financially and through business management to develop those into prosperous companies. I'm uh, a venture capitalist. Uh, basically what I do is I um, try to commercialize um, small startups, um, primarily intellectual property that comes out of the University of Hawaii. We term the universities as idea factories. They are producing ideas through the research and, and the different types of um, educational processes that goes on up there. Ideas are spawned. We then take those ideas or deal flow and try to turn them into something that's commercialized, something that society wants, something that will help to improve society. We've um, funded a company started by Norm Abramson out of the uh, engineering department, the double E department. We've um, funded a company called Kona Bay Oyster and Shrimp Company out of the bioengineering department with Professor Jokai Wang. Uh, we've uh, done uh, other businesses in the communications field and the biotech field that uh, have come out of the university. I think um, the university is probably the single strongest engine for growth uh, and projects that uh, HMS will invest in. We do anywhere from 100 to $150 million a year in research grants and contracts alone. Just our small little $2 million fund has probably created more than 250 jobs. We've leased, our companies now lease seven or eight acres in agriculture and aquaculture. We're huge tenants in some of the buildings downtown. Um, there is a big impact on just a small expenditure in well thought out technology areas. These research type jobs, these higher level jobs, they throw off discretionary income. And the discretionary income is what is taken down to the malls and the restaurants and the movie theaters and spent by the individuals, gets multiplied through the economy. And as any economist will tell you, the economy is driven by consumer spending. And we need to get our consumer spending up. That means we need to get higher paying jobs. The university is, is directly helping us in, in producing those jobs and, and will continue to do so. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a marine biologist. I want to be an attorney like my mom. I want to be a veterinarian because I like animals. Help us keep their dreams alive. Join with HSTA for better education in Hawaii. HSTA, changing minds. When I grow up, I want to be a teacher. I teach in the arts, and I believe that 
we are all coming to this world a creative being. I really do believe that. And I really feel that the education during the college years is educating the whole person. It's not just about learning a particular skill. It's about who you are as a human being. And the arts are one of those wonderful areas that you can grow, discover more about yourself, and then of course give that back somehow to the community or to the world at large, depends on what your goals are. How can we make sure UH continues to be the idea factory, the economic engine that Havre and Richardson speak of? In our next segment, we'll look for some of the solutions. We all know how tough the economic conditions are in the state of Hawaii, and it's perhaps at times like this that we should actually spend more money, more attention on the university, as opposed to taking money away from the university. We can become a dynamite research and development center, as the Silicon Valley area is through the Stanford University and Cal and, and so on. We can send out, license out our uh, intellectual property that's developed here. We need to inspire our students to believe that they can become part of this, uh, that the career paths in engineering and science and mathematics, those are all potential areas. And the university is a, is a key part of that. It's our brain trust for the state. It's almost criminal what's been going on over the last few years. It's short-sightedness as far as investing you know, our taxpayer dollars. We should be investing them into the university. The, the small dollars we spend now will reap many, many dollars in the future. In Hawaii, you get crucified for failure. Well, we don't want to get crucified for failure. That's just one step closer to success. And the university has to do that, say, take, take that same attitude. Spend money in multiple areas, in well thought out areas, and expect some failures, but also expect some huge successes. There's a lot of research that goes on that the university does for private sector. Uh, there's a lot of needs that the private sector has in the research that's done by the university. And, it, it, and, and further collaboration, uh, further partnerships can only make things better for the state. You're talking about money. And when you talk about money, people get weird. And in, in the same sense, okay, politicians, when they start seeing money, to them it's power to control that money. And we need to get the politicians out of it, okay? As much as we can, we need to separate the politics out of the university. The university should run pretty much like a business. If the faculty is allowed to participate in the governance of this school, that the school will be better for it because the, the faculty is in touch with larger issues of discipline and also with students. You know, there needs to be a connection between economic policy and university policy because it's not, it's not separate things. It really does need to be one and the same. Any money that the state puts into the university uh, will pay off far better than, the, uh, than Wall Street markets. And the reason is because it, it will not only be a financial gain for the state, but it will be a gain for the state in keeping its young people here. I think from the standpoint of you know what the state's future is really tied to if we don't invest in the university we are gonna be hard-pressed to build a new economic future if I had one thing I could ask people to change their minds about is the way in which we regard investment for our future we cannot continue to look at these things as an annual problem we've got to look in the long range and it's got to be an investment in the future of the people of Hawaii we need leadership we need a vision that this is the direction we're going to take. And that vision has to be shared, not only you know, in the administration, but also with the people of the state and the students. We're not the number one. We should be the number one. And I think we can if we all got together and start working towards that end. You don't have to be rich to be committed. What you have to understand is, is that the University of Hawaii is a unique place that has all kinds of things to offer, not just the people of this state, but the whole world. That's a leadership question. That's a, a question of, of, of being in love with the, what the University of Hawaii can provide. Now, if the people of Hawaii want a first-class university, they better call upon their senators and representatives to put up or shut up. 
people have to come forward and say they want a first class institution in the state of Hawaii and they will not settle for anything less. In a nutshell, here's what has to happen. The regions put forward a budget to the legislature. The legislature has the hearings, they pass the budget. The governor then decides whether that budget's going to be vetoed. If it isn't, the governor really has to put that money forward. You don't want to have restrictions after the fact, because the university has to plan for months, sometimes years in advance. Once there's that agreement between the legislature and the governor on the budget that has been put forward by the university, it's fundamental that that money be released by the governor and that the university be allowed to advance the way it should. I'm a senior at the University of Hawaii. I graduate this year. I'm fortunate to have received a good education. Hopefully, I'll be able to live and work here in Hawaii and contribute to our community. Will your kids and their kids have the same opportunity? For their sake, please call your legislators and urge them to support our university. Let's reopen the lines of communication. We're the only institution that can provide for the broad range of higher education needs for the people. We must be that for the people of the state. What you need to do is you have to be a person that can think and innovate and commercialize and have passion for what you're doing. And those are the people that we need to get and keep in Hawaii. And the university is the only place that you can do that. You really have to be involved in order to better the institution. If you're not involved, then you certainly can't blame anybody else uh, for uh, any lacks that the institution may have. You've got to be out there, lobby for it, have a passion for it, have faith in the institution, and you can show that by uh, being involved. The average citizen needs to realize that if this university isn't the best that it can be, the students of Hawaii lose. They lose at every level. They lose internationally, they lose nationally, and of course they, they lose locally. If we can't provide the best education, the best resources, the best faculty to our students, Hawaii loses. This woman specializes in tuberculosis research, but because of budget cuts, she can't get the P3 facility she needs to work with live TB cultures. Her equipment is old. There are no funds to repair or replace it so her department can't compete for the federal grants that would aid her research. Meanwhile, tuberculosis is making a comeback, and Hawaii's rate of increase is the nation's highest. It's time to stand up and fight for our university.